according to the will, according to the will, there it is, of God. Let's find a specific will. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. We can live Romans 8, 28 after we realize we need Holy Spirit to direct us in the specific will. Okay? Let's pray a minute and then unpack this. Jesus, we need you. Holy Spirit, help us. Thank you that we get to do this and to we not miss one moment of what you have for us. And all City Church said, Amen. great example for you, and this is absolutely true, in uh, over Tracy and I are celebrating our 30th year of, of full-time ministry, and there was a time I was counseling a person that attended our church, and this person came into my office and quite broken, and it was a female, and she was broken, and she was weeping, and, and then she was a mess, and she was like, Pastor, I need to just, I, I need some wisdom on what to do with my circumstance. I said, okay, what is your circumstance? And she says, well, um, I, I live back in the Midwest, and, and I actually was incarcerated for a season in the Midwest, and then I moved out here after being released. I didn't want to be back there, and when I moved out here, my family was here, and I realized how hard it was on my family while I was incarcerated. My incarceration was very, very hard on my family, so I got involved with an organization that supports families of those that are incarcerated. And I met this wonderful woman, and we built a relationship, and it turns out that her son is incarcerated. And so um, I began to write letters to her son, and, and we began this relationship, and her son had in his cell illegally, but he had a cell phone. And so we began to talk, and we even began to FaceTime each other, although it was contraband. And we built this relationship, and so um, we, we, we've never met in person, but we got married. And we, so we, we did get married, and, and in the state of Arizona, you can do that. We got married, and, and so I'm married to this man, and, and he, he doesn't get out of prison for eight more years. Um, and I'm in a relationship with his, his mom, and it's a wonderful relationship. And so after I got married to this individual, uh, his cellmate uh, found his phone, and his cellmate and I began talking over the phone, and his cellmate and I began exchanging uh, illicit pictures and um, I'm now in an intimate relationship, emotional relationship with a cellmate. Well, my husband found out what was going on between me and his cellmate. And now he has told me that he is going to have his cellmate shanked out on the yard of the prison. What should I do? I'm going to promise you, Bible school doesn't teach that. <laughs> There's not a verse for me on that one. It's like, ah, oh, just, just a sec, I'll be with you. Prison yard, prison yard, prison yard, prison <laughs> yard. Married over the phone, got married over the phone. Yeah, I don't know. There's, that's where Holy Spirit has to come in. I know the general will of God. There were some mistakes made in this thing. But in the current situation, yeah, do you think? You're a prophet. But determining the specific will of God to, gener to journey through this, I need Holy Spirit in that. Okay? There are times in our lives where we need a personal relationship with Holy Spirit in order to navigate whatever place that we're in or what might be brought to us asking for some kind of wisdom. Okay? I'm hoping this series, uh, we, can re we can both uh, re remove fear and reveal Holy Spirit in, on, on another level. So let, let, today I want to do this. I'll, here's what I want to do. Here's, I want to answer this question about Holy Spirit. Is he charismatic? Let's, I'm going to talk about that today. Because that, that's a funny word we kind of, in churches, go back and forth on. Well, that's a charismatic church. Ooh. going to have so much fun. <laughs> Let me give you the definition of, of charismatic or charisma. I'm going to give you the definition of it, and this is from a modern-day the theologian. I did not come up with this. This is a uh, modern-day theologian uh, from his most recent book, Charisma. This is charisma. Charisma is the instantaneous enablement of the Holy Spirit in the life of any believer to exercise a gift for the edification of others. Let me read that to you again. Charisma is the instantaneous enablement of the Holy Spirit in the life of any believer to exercise a gift for the edification of others. That's the definition of charisma. Charisma is two words, charis, and, and many of us recognize charis through some other ways. Charis means grace. We, 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 we know some people perhaps named charis, 
but we really know people named Charity, which is from Charis, which is grace. We know people named Grace, which would be Charis. Okay, so, 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 so Charis is, is and, and, if, and if, if I go too fast and you don't get to write down what I put up here, uh, let me know, I'll email you my, my notes. This is so important that, that we get this. So, so Charis is Greek for, for, for grace. And when you put ma on the end of it, charisma, ma means gift. Okay, so charisma is a gift of grace. You with me? Really important, really important that we get that. Charisma is simply the gift of grace. Why are we so afraid of the word charismatic? It simply means gift of grace. When we say someone is, well, he's got a lot of charisma, we're really saying that that person is gifted in grace. You're very charismatic. Well, that means that you're, you're gifted in, in grace. So let me tell you something. If you have a relationship with Jesus, I really don't care about your religious or theological background. If you have a relationship with Jesus, you are charismatic. Breaks down the walls, doesn't it? We all go to a charismatic church. If you're in right relationship with Jesus, because it is gift of grace. So when people say, is City Church charismatic? We say, yes, and so are you. <laughs> Freak them out. <laughs> Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Important. A couple pieces here. Number one, he doesn't say, I don't want you to be stupid. He says, I don't want you to be Ignorant. We are all ignorant about something. Ignorant just simply means I don't have the information. I don't know. It's not an insult. It's just truth. I'm ignorant of. It, it, if you want me to work on your car, I am ignorant. <laughs> Captain ignorant. I have an I on my chest. I am ignorant. I don't take that as an insult. I take that as a gift. <laughs> you should too. But he says, I don't want you to, to, to be ignorant. Now, the word spiritual, that word spiritual, he, sa he says, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. That word spiritual is, is pneum pneumaticos. Do we have that on there? Did I put those in there? Here it is. This is, spir this is. this is the word spiritual. I want you to get this. Pneumaticos. Okay? Pneumatic. That word pneumatic means what? Pne you ever heard of a pneumatic drill? How does that work? Air. By the air. It, it's by a, by a breath. It's so, so pneumatic is the breath. It's the air of God. So concerning the, the breath of God, I don't want you to be ignorant. Concerning the spiritual, the breath of God gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. It's really, really important that we get there. So, it's, so the, these gifts are empowered. They're empowered by breath or by, or by wind. Or by wind, when you go to a, a tire shop and they're running those, those things that go, <laughs> and, then, and then it scares the Dickens head, and it goes, da, 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 da. like, oh, he's, a, he's an angry elf. <laughs> so really, <laughs> we're going to be here a while. So really that verse says, concerning the empowered gifts by the breath of God, I don't want you to be ignorant. It, it, it's, it's important that we get that. Now, now uh, th that, word, that word concerning, Paul says now concerning. Let me tell you, I'm giving you a little Bible class, and then we're going to roll through this. Here's why Paul says now concerning. The words now concerning are in 1 Corinthians six times. And here's why. Paul wrote another letter to the Corinthians before 1 Corinthians. This is really 2 Corinthians. He wrote a previous letter to the Corinthians, and they responded to that letter, and his response to their letter is what we call 1 Corinthians. And I'll just show you, I'll show you in Scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 9. I wrote to you in my previous letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. See, Paul says, I wrote to you in my previous letter. We don't know what happened to that letter. Uh, we, we don't know what happened to it or where it went. Um, I just kind of think God said to Paul, mm, that's not good enough, not getting in the Bible. Write another one. 
I wrote to you in my previous letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. And then if, I'll take you to another one. This is, I could go all the way through this, but uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 1, Paul writes, now concerning the things which you wrote to me. So Paul is answering a question when he says, concerning the spiritual gifts, concerning the questions that you asked, I don't want you to be ignorant about those that are empowered by the breath of God. You asked about it, so I'm going to answer. That's, that's what's happening here. We missed the first two letters, but that's what Paul's referring to. Okay? You okay? Okay. So he says, now concerning spiritual gifts. That's the context of what Paul says here. We're going to get into Holy Spirit being charismatic in a minute. So in spiritual gifts, there's, we really don't know. The truth of the matter is we don't know how many spiritual gifts there are. We really don't know. We have to remember that our God is a creative God, always creating God. Okay? He's always created. Now, there are some there's, there's specific categories of gifts, and I'm going to talk about those. There's four specific categories of gifts. I'm going to only land on one set of those four categories today, and we're going to break that one down, and I can spend time on each part of, of where we're going. So the first... The first spiritual gift, the first category of spiritual gift is the motivational gifts. Motivational gifts. In Romans 12, you can read about it. I am motivated. That my motivation and what, what motivates me, what moves me forward, uh, those are the, the, the motivational gifts. The second, the second set of gifts is the manifestational gifts. Manifestational gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the manifestational gifts uh, today. Uh, the third set of gifts is found in 1 Corinthians 14. And it's the ministry gifts, the, the, the ministry gifts. And, and again, that's a, that's a whole other message. We'll talk about that. And then the fourth set is in Ephesians 4, where it's the ministerial gifts. And the ministerial gifts aren't from Holy Spirit. Those are from Jesus, the fivefold ministry. If you're not familiar with the, the term fivefold, Ephesians talks to us about uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, preachers, and teachers, the fivefold ministry. Those are gifts, and those are another topic for another day. Today we're going to just talk about the manifestational gifts that we see in Corinthians 12 and where it talks about the charisma, the grace gift of, of the Lord, okay? So 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Are you guys with me? I'm warning you. I told you last week this series is going to be like turning on a fire hose and you just got to suck it in. Um, and every one of them is going to be that way. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But... The manifestation <clears throat> of the Spirit. So, do we know, we got to stop and go, oh wait, what, what the heck does manifestation mean? Manifestation, what, is, what does that mean? It's, it's, it's the expression or it's something made visible. When it's manifest, it's expressed or it's, it's made visible. But the, but, the, but the expression of the Spirit is given to each one. Are you in each one? Okay, I hope I didn't have to teach on that. <laughs> in case you didn't say yes, you are. Everyone in this room is in each one. Okay? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. For the profit of all. Are you in all? Yes, you are. We're getting there. You are in each one, and you're in all. So each one of you has the Holy Spirit there, and, and he's waiting to manifest his charisma, his gifts in you, so that others will benefit. Okay? <clears throat> Here, watch these nine. These are, the, these are nine, nine manifest, manifestional, manifestional gifts we're going to hit today. <clears throat> For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, this is important, gifts of healings. I want to land on that for a second. Notice that's plural. So we're going to come back to it. Gifts of healings. Not the gift of healing. Gifts of healing. Okay? By the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. Plural. Thank you, Jesus. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Okay? So the truth is, 
<clears throat> we, we use these terms, but it's an inaccurate term. We use this term, well, I have the gift of prophecy. No, you don't. You have Holy Spirit, and he chooses to use that gift through you. I have the, the gift of discerning of spirits. No, you don't. You have Holy Spirit, and he uses that gift through you. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> now, I've taken these nine gifts and broken them into, into three categories. First category is the discerning gift. The, the discerning gifts that, that we just read in 1 Corinthians 12, which is the manifestational gifts of Holy Spirit. The discerning gifts. The first discerning gift that we talked about is word of knowledge. Okay? Word of knowledge. Here's the definition of the word of knowledge. To know something specific without having to learn it by natural means. That's a word of knowledge. Jesus, with the woman at the well, said, go get your husband. She said, the one I'm with is not my husband. He says, yeah, I know. You had five others. And the one you're with now, you ain't married to. You're shacking up. And she says, I think you're a prophet. And if I was him, I'd have said, do you think? <laughs> he had this word of knowledge. Now, here's the deal. People will say, well, he was Jesus. He be he. He left his deity to become fully man. He was fully man, empowered by Holy Spirit. Jesus went into the wilderness, read it in, in, in Luke, went into the wilderness, led by Holy Spirit, came out of the wilderness, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was baptized and received Holy Spirit. Jesus functioned like you and I, fully man, through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit gave him a word of knowledge. We've all had those. The only question is, did you honor and move on them? When you felt you had a word of knowledge, did you give life to it? Okay? Because when it's not the word of knowledge, or when you don't give life to a word of knowledge, that is when you go into ignorance. Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant. So when you get a manifestational gift through the discerning gift, word of knowledge, Move on it. Here's what we do. We're afraid we'll be wrong. I don't know if you know this or not, but Jesus can cover your mistakes. <laughs> He's got that part. Okay? So that's the first, the, the first discerning gift. The second, the second discerning gift is a word of wisdom, not a word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. This is the definition of a word of wisdom. A divine answer to a solution for a for a particular event. A divine answer or solution for a particular event. Divine answer. So, John chapter 9. G blind guy gets healed. Cruising through the temple. I can see, I can see. I saw the light. I saw the light. Come on, who's a Johnny Cash fan? All right, come on. Thank you, sister. He gets stopped by the Pharisees. They go, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What should we do that was blind? Mm -hmm. uh, today's the Sabbath. You can't be healed. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> they said, uh, we, we want to know who healed you. He said, I don't know who healed me. They said, then you, they say this. They say, it's like, well, then you can't be healed. And here's what he says. Here's what he says. No one has ever healed someone that was blind from birth, would you like him to touch you too? That's a word of wisdom for that specific event. He didn't have to defend what happened to him. He spoke a word of wisdom into that specific event that could have come disastrous. Okay? That's a word Wisdom with, with the blind guy. I love that story of the blind guy. <clears throat> the, next, the next is in, in, in discerning gifts. The, the third discerning gift is discerning of spirits. The discerning of spirits. The discerning of spirits is to be made, to be made aware of the presence of a demonic 
spirit, the presence of a demonic spirit. Remember Paul and Silas are cruising along? Ministry's growing. They're, they're just, they're nailing it out there. Ministry's growing. Influence is growing. Holy Spirit is showing up, talking to Paul. Go here. Don't go there. It's a great ministry. There's this little girl wandering behind him, and she's crying out, these men are expressions of the word of God. So what she was saying was accurate. But Paul determined, this is a demonic spirit. I don't want a witch <laughs> confirming my ministry. So turn around, rebuke the spirit, send it packing. He discerned an evil spirit. So the discerning of gifts. So let me, let me just go a couple things on this, on, 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 on this one. There, you, you can do a Bible search. There is not a gift of discernment. It's not an existing gift. You can see, you, we need to be discerning people, and that means being aware and, and using our circumstances and the situation. But it's a, the, the, the discerning is a discerning of spirits. That's the gift. It's the discerning of spirits. It's not just discerning. Here's the deal. Most people, not all, most people that I've met in my ministry that come to me and say, I have a, a, the spirit of discernment, really I hear them saying, I, I am very critical. <laughs> and I know who to criticize and when to criticize them. I have a, and I say, oh, I have the discerning of spirits and I discern you're a critical spirit. Most of the time, we want to cover up our criticism by calling it a discerning spirit. When there's, or, or a discerning gift, a gift of discernment. There is no gift of discernment. There is the discernment of spirits. And we don't have it. He has it inside of us and gives it to us when we need it. You with me? Super, super important to get that. But here's the beauty of that. Wouldn't you love, don't you, wouldn't you love to have Holy Spirit show you, hey, there's a demonic force coming against your marriage. Hey, there's a demonic force coming against you on your job. Hey, there's a demonic force trying to take out your children. Hey, there's a demonic force attacking your finances. Hey, there's a demonic force over someone in a, that's, a, that's a part of City Church. I want you to wake up and pray. Hey, there's a demonic force that's happening on this campus. Hey, that's what it's for, for Holy Spirit to come to us and go, I want to give you the discernment of spirits so that you don't have to walk through life in a fog you know what's happening in my marriage. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. There's a demonic force coming against my marriage. I, I thought that was a lot better than you did. So, <clears throat> Okay. We want to be able to discern spirits. We want that. So that's, the, the, that, that, that's, that's the, the discerning gifts. The second category we're going to talk about is the declarative gifts. Stay with me on this one. The declarative gifts that, that Paul listed in those nine. These are the declarative gifts. Okay? Number one that Paul talked about is prophecy. Prophecy. A message of encouragement from God through a person. I want you to hear that. A message of encouragement from God through a person. New Testament prophecy is never about correction. You won't find it in New Testament. Old Testament prophecy, yes. New Testament prophecy is for the purpose of encouragement. That's the purpose of New Testament prophecy is for the purpose of encouragement. Always. If you go to someone or someone comes to you and says they have a prophetic word and it comes with a flavor of correction, that's not a prophetic word. That's a pathetic word. First Corinthians 14, 31. Paul says, for you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be encouraged. Prophecy is a, is a process of learning. You may have a prophetic word, or you may not, but you give it in a prophetic sense, and you could be wrong, but as long as you're in a learning curve, you're covered by grace. There's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a pastor on the internet, one of those little funny videos of a pastor, and, and, and he says he's from Alabama, he's from Alabama, so he's got that Alabama accent, and, and, and he's talking about the Holy Spirit, and, and, and he's got it, he says, thus says the Lord, 
Hope Spirit says to you, I know you're scared. I'm scared sometimes too. Now, here's some bad grammar, but Holy Spirit doesn't get scared. But what he was trying to do is say, Holy Spirit understands what you're going through. So, so don't, don't when someone throws something out that says it's prophetic, and, and it may not, not be bullet accurate, Paul says that we're all learning. We're all learning. We're all learning. And sometimes a prophetic word doesn't happen the day that it's given. Ask Joseph of the Old Testament. Had a dream at 17, a prophetic dream at 17. 23 years later, it became real. And the journey in between sucked. Okay? So the first declarative gift is prophecy. Second declarative gift is tongues. So stay with me on this. In two weeks, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after, I'm going to spend the whole message talking about tongues. Okay, we're going to talk all about tongues two weeks from today. Some of you are excited. Some of you are nervous. <laughs> Declarative gift. Second one is tongues. Tongues is a message from God in a language unknown to the person through whom the message comes. A message from God unknown to the person through whom the message comes. This is super important. This is super important that we understand what, what tongues are, okay? So Paul, Paul talks about that there, that, that, that there needs to be an interpretation of tongues. So let me help you land on that. Paul did not say a translation of tongues. He said an interpretation of tongues. An interpretation of tongues means to express the intent of the tongue. Translation is word for word. The United Nations does not have interpreters. They have translators. Because if somebody gets on there and talks about a bomb, I don't want the intent of the message. I want every detail of the message. That's a translator. An interpreter expresses the intent of the message. A translator does word for word. Paul says that one of the gifts is interpretation, not translation. And that's where there's confusion in the church. Because sometimes somebody will give a message in tongues, and then the translation will be shorter or longer, and we go, see? See? That proves it right there. That guy gave a tongue, and that guy's interpretation was way shorter. <laughs> proves it all. No. That guy's... <laughs> My son Parker, he comes home from work, and you say to Parker, hey, Park, how's your day? And you're lucky if you get good. Sometimes you don't even get words. It's like, mm. <laughs> Our daughter Taylor came over yesterday. How's your day? Oh, Dad, this morning I got up, and my boys, at least they slept through the night, and it was really good, and I'm not really feeling well, so I went to the gym and worked out for a little bit, and then we went to the house, and we're trying to remodel this house. I told you about the house that we're going to do. We're going to change the kitchen up, and I'm telling you right now, if you want to ask some my daughter about her day, you better have time to listen. <laughs> they interpret their days differently. It doesn't make anyone less true. Okay. Paul says one of the gifts is the interpretation of tongues, not the translation of tongues. Let's get past that. That was a good word, Pastor. Thank you very much. <laughs> and what I'm talking about here, this is not a prayer language tongues. That's, that's two weeks from now. We're going to talk about a personal prayer language of tongues in two weeks. Let me just plant a seed about that. The prayer language of tongues is a gift. And unfortunately, the church and the devil have made it divisive and created an anxious attitude about it. It is a gift. If you have that gift, you're not more saved than someone that doesn't. I want to make that clear. If you don't have that gift and you'd like that gift, ask for the gift. He likes to give gifts. Okay? We at City Church believe that all the gifts are alive and well and functioning, and we function in those. And, and, and Pastor Russ speaks in tongues. And you might say, well, I don't ever hear it in service. Because, listen, there's, and we'll talk about it in two weeks, and I'm just planting some seeds. 
Listen, if you came up and stood next to me in worship, you would hear me speaking in tongues during worship. I'm not praying over you. I'm praying for you. You don't need an interpretation. If it comes from here, you need an interpretation. If it comes in a public expression, that makes sense? I can't stop going down this road. So, <laughs> Tracy and I were at a, 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 a church camp, about 600 people in an auditorium, worshiping one night. Powerful night, powerful presence of the Holy Spirit, just worshiping, worshiping. If I get this wrong, help me. Worshiping, that's what she does in life. She like <laughs> Translation. <laughs> About 600 people in the service, and it was a powerful night, and, and there was just a kind of a lull, a quiet in worship, kind of like what we had today, just, just kind of got quiet for a minute. And one guy just launches off, and, and he gives this message in tongues very loud over the whole, the whole house, very loud. And so the, the pastor that was over the service said, we're going to wait for the, for the translation from the Lord. We're going to wait. And it, was, it seemed like, I don't know, a while. But then another person in the room gave a translation, and it was a word of encouragement, and it empowered people, and it was, it was a word of encouragement. <clears throat> so then the service moved on. We found out after the service that in the back of the room was a guy from Russia, correct? From Russia. And he said that the guy that gave the tongue, gave the tongue in Russian. And the guy that gave the interpretation was spot on. Like a 15-year-old kid gave this in, in the church. So, so in that setting, if we have that public expression, we as a body have to wait on an interpretation. We, that's our obligation to wait on it. Okay? But when it's my private prayer language, I'm not giving you an interpretation. It's me and the Spirit chilling. Okay? And it's a beautiful gift. Two weeks, Russ, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Okay. <laughs> First Corinthians 14, 5. Well, what a great way to segue into this verse. First Corinthians 14, 5. I wish you all spoke with tongues. Now, let me say something to you. Listen to me. Listen to me close. Listen to me close. Paul wrote this, but Holy Spirit authored it. This book is God-breathed. It doesn't make mistakes. Every line in this is God breathed. And God said, I wish you all spoke in tongues. Now, I don't care what your religious background is, but at some point you have to face this verse and deal with it. <clears throat> I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more, watch this, but even more that you prophesied. Okay? So, remember what the point of prophecy is in the New Testament? Encouragement. Prophecy in the New Testament is encouragement. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied, encouraged. For he who prophesies, encourages, is greater than he who speaks in tongues. Now that's where people like to throw it out. Oh, but the gift of prophecy is greater than the gift of tongues. Greater, greater, greater. Well, if you know grammar, you're wrong. Because it says this. Greater is he who speaks in tongues unless, that's a big word. If I have a coupon, I go to a store and I say I want to apply this coupon and they say the coupon's expired and I say but the coupon says I get five bucks off and they say you get five bucks off unless it's not expired. So, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues unless un indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So prophecy and gifts of tongues are the same as long as there's an interpretation. We like to throw out there, prophecy's bigger. No, prophecy's the same. If there's an interpretation. You with me? Okay. Last gift. Declarative gift. The declarative gift. There. The, the dynamic, dynamic gifts. Acts 1.8 will be our reference. This is the most familiar. We could go to many. But you shall receive power 
That word power is dunamis or duname or dunamai. There's different tr- ways to say it. But that word dunamis means power. That word dunamis is where we get dynamite, explosive power. And you will receive explosive power when Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will, you, you will receive, you will receive, you will receive. Guess what? You are a you. You are a you. And you will receive, you will receive, you will receive power that you're a you. And you will receive power when Holy Spirit comes on you. Woo-hoo! For you control freaks, give it up. You will receive power when Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power for what? Number one, for faith. Faith, a supernatural impartation of beliefs and a confidence for a specific situation. Not faith in general, Jesus saves me, I know I'm saved, I walk with Jesus, not that kind of faith. Faith for a specific situation. Holy Spirit comes and imparts to you faith for that situation, encourages you in that situation. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you ever walk away. You stand firm in this situation, in this job situation, in this healing situation, in this marriage situation, in this daughter situation, in this granddaughter situation, in this place, wherever you are, don't you dare give up. Holy Spirit imparts a faith to you that can't be explained except through the strength of the Holy Spirit. And he says, I'm going to give to you faith that will empower you, give you dynamite faith. It will blow up what you think is going to take you out. You are in charge. You are the head. You are not the tail. You are above. You are not beneath. You are the the beginning and the end because he is the beginning and the end. You have never entered a battle. You're not prepared to win. You have victory on your side. You are more than an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. You are set free, redeemed, and set on a path high on hind's feet where you can't stumble. He makes the path broad for you. Put you on display in front of the enemy. Enemy says, where'd they go? Oh, they're up there. I can't even get there. Why? Because he put you there, not for him to get there. You are greater than Job. You are greater than anybody that's failed. Why? Because you have Holy Spirit empowering you for faith. (sighs) Come on. We need breakthrough. Come on. Okay. Woo. I'm feeling like that one was good. <laughs> Declarative gifts. Second one is gifts. Remember I said it? gifts of healing. Remember I referred to the plural of it when we read that scripture? Gifts of healing. So people that walk around and say, I have the gift of healing. Huh. No, you don't. Holy Spirit has lots of gifts of healing, and he'll impart them to you as you use them and as you need. Unfortunately, here's what we do. Let me tell you what Pastor Russ did. It's just like, here's what we do. I was born 1960, a long time ago, with a severe... (laughs) All right. Did you hear her? Time ago, she goes, "Mm mm-hmm. I'm getting a discerning spirit. <laughs> oh, it was Preston? Oh. Punk, little punk. In 1960, I was born, and I had a, I had a severe heart condition. Which, and, and, and back in those days, babies with that type of heart condition didn't live without open heart surgery or even heart replacement. <coughs> By the age of nine... Um, I, w- I lived in Missoula, Montana. I was scheduled to go to the Children's Hospital in Seattle, Washington for a preliminary exam to set me up for my open heart surgery um, that I was going to have to have. And, and, and the risks back in the 60s were extreme for uh, a, a, not just an infant, but for a young child to survive this kind of invasive surgery on the heart. And it was, it was a frightening to me as a nine-year-old. And uh, my, so my mom... Uh, the night before we went to Seattle, uh, we went to church on a Sunday night, and Sunday nights back then, um, we, we called them waiting services. We just went in and waited 
And as a kid, I'm like, what are we waiting for? Everybody's waiting. So we went into a waiting service, and my mom took me to the front of the service, and she had uh, the, the elders lay hands on me and pray for me for healing. And it touched my heart. So the next day, we went to Seattle, Washington, and went in for, uh, for, the, for the procedure. Uh, to They sent tubes up my arms and, and into my heart. A catheterization, it's called. And they did a, a five five different catheterizations to get a glimpse of my heart and uh, came back and told my mom there's nothing wrong with this heart. Um, I had been supernaturally healed um, and this, this, this was published in a, in a, at the time, a national magazine called the Pentecostal Evangel. They published a story about the supernatural healing in my heart and yet I took that that supernatural healing, and as an adolescent, became involved in drugs and began to exercise cocaine, which was very hard on your heart. And so Holy Spirit won't give you gifts that you won't take care of. Okay? But I will tell you this. I was supernaturally healed, and I today believe for supernatural healing. And I lay hands on people, and I pray for people, and not everybody I pray for gets healed, but that doesn't give me the right to quit. Because the Bible says that not everybody's going to get saved, but that doesn't give me the right to stop evangelizing. And so I will always pray for physical healing until the day I go see Jesus because he physically healed me in a supernatural way. And you, that is, that is, you can't argue with that. There's no, there's no biblical argument for a supernatural touch as a nine-year-old child. So I believe in healing, and, and I believe for healing for many of you but it's plural. There's healings. He doesn't just heal hearts. He heals minds. He heals relationships. He heals blood systems. He heals, he heals the brokenhearted. He heals our emotions. He heals our, he heals our hearing. He heals our eyes. He, it's multiple gifts of healings that's available to each one of us today. Ab, if you guys would come up. The third part of the declarative gifts are miracles. Miracles. A miracle is divine intervention that alters our natural circumstances. Divine intervention that alters our natural circumstances. Divine intervention that alters our natural circumstances. I already shared with you about my heart. I wonder in this room by show of hands, how many of you have experienced a miracle? Divine intervention that altered natural circumstances? Yeah, there's, there you go. Come on, I want to see hands. Look at that. Look at that. Let me just say this to you. If you've received salvation, you've received the greatest miracle of all time. Everyone in this room, if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior, you need to, and you will receive a miracle that alters natural circumstances. If you're in this room, and you're right with Jesus, you've experienced at least one miracle. We serve a charismatic God, the gift of grace. And in that gift of grace, there are gifts to heal. There are expressions to heal. I talked about the gifts. But when I talk on this topic, May I never conclude with us focusing on the gifts. I want to talk about the gift giver. And his name is Jesus. And he died for each of our salvation. And he rose again, victory over every one of our disappointments. And he's coming soon because he wants to give us a new heaven and a new earth. And if he never manifests another gift between today and that new heaven, I want to love him as much as I do right now. If I never have a gift of tongues, if I never see another healing, if I never get another financial breakthrough, if, 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 I, if I get sick or some of my family gets sick, I will not give up on my love for Jesus because my focus has to be on the giver, not the gift. stand with me, please.
I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and as we're going to do through this whole series, with your heads down and your eyes closed, I'm going to, I want you to say in your heart or out loud, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me right now? Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me right now? Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me right now? And we have to learn to hear him. I want to take this moment. Right now you're saying, I don't, I don't know that I'm hearing. He's speaking. You might be saying he wants more time. You might be saying he wants you to forgive. You might be saying he wants you to be bold and walk in again in his gifts. You might be saying, I want to set you free from an addiction. Spirit, what do you want from me right now?
that scripture we read, Paul wrote, I wish that you all spoke in tongues and that you prophesied. And you realize that the word prophecy means to encourage. So I think it would be accurate to say that Paul says, I wish that you all would encourage. So I just want to, when you leave here today, perhaps before you go or as you live your life, let Holy Spirit remind you to go encourage, to be that prophetic voice in someone that may be discouraged at that moment, and they need that edification. I'm going to pray over you. I thank you for being here today. Just remind you that starting point we're going to meet. If you've not been to a starting point, it's the beginning of getting involved with City Church to the left and down the hall. Father, thank you. Thank you for Holy Spirit. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the direction. More than ever, thank you for the relationship. And may we at City Church be a place that walk in all the gifts because we walk with a relationship with Holy Spirit. I love you, Lord. I love you so much. Let everything we do point to you. And may we be encouragers. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Amen, City Church. God bless you. When you are, I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Ooh. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't try. You've never been closer than you are right now. Let's sing it loud, y'all. You are a child. You are in the I can see so clear what it's all about.